You're listening to the Snowplow Show here on Prank Call Nation. We'll call landlords and customers causing massive aggravation. Roy's not a hobo, he is your host. He drinks for local with his jelly and toast. So sit back, relax, let the antics begin. PLA for the win. Hi, uh, this is Roy from the. I delivered your pizza. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, my manager wanted me to call and just apologize for what I did. So I just wanted to let oh, you know. Oh, that's fine. But that's let, fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're 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 okay with it and everything. I mean, I guess you discovered it already. The pee on your door. Yeah. Okay. I'm really sorry. I peed on your door. I apologize. It won't happen again. What? I'm, I'm saying I apologize and it won't happen again. For what? For peeing on your door. For peeing on my door? Yeah, because I was just, it was just the whole tip thing. I was upset about the tip. And I wasn't thinking clearly and I peed on your door. I'm sorry about that. The pizza guy pissed on our door. What? The pizza guy pissed on our door. Why? Because he was upset about our tip and that he, he was apologizing for forgetting our this is him, and he's apologizing for pissing on our door. Why? Hi. I just wanted to apologize for what I did, so I gotta get back to my deliveries now. What did you but do? I peed on the door. Why? Because the tip wasn't very good there, and I just wasn't thinking clearly. You know, I've been... I'm a little high right now, and I just peed on the door, so I'm sorry. Wasn't thinking well, clearly. Well, come back to my house, because I'm going to beat your fucking ass. You hear me? Well, if you order a pizza, I'm definitely going to come back. Just try and tip better next time. Yeah, okay. You know what you can do is suck my left nut, you piece of shit. I can suck your left nut. Do you hear me? I, I don't swing that way, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, you do I'm, something. Piss may- on somebody's fucking door, you're retarded. Well, I'm sorry I peed don't on your door. Don't come back to my house. Well, if you order a pizza, I'm going to have to come back. So I'm being right called on the telephone. Yeah, just write that. You know what? I think you better take uh, a pill and smoke another funny cigarette and shove it up your ass. Don't you ever call this number again. I know that the phone's not a toy. I just got a call from a Roy. The number shows up and it's spoof. Says he's at my house replacing my roof. Man, this guy's a jerk for this. I just rushed home, left work for this. No one's at my house on my roof. This Roy guy, what a goof. We just made a non sweet pool, and the landlord says, not nah, cool. Not on the lease, my name's Roy Chevelle, unit 203. I'm a tenant from hell. There's a tunnel system attached. We found a secret hatch. Don't get smart with me, and I'm tight. This is now an archaeological dig site. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. This is episode 540, and this one's brought to you by Plaz and Stan Trucker, Thomas Z, Arbitrary Alex, and Badger Teeth. 
Big hugs and stuff to those five people for sponsoring this episode. And thanks to everyone else that's been supporting the show on the Patreon and on the website. And thanks to the new people who've signed up, including but not limited to Vernon S., Nellie Bird, Jan N., Frydock, or Freedock, I don't know, Dime T., Diem T., DM T., I don't know, Mike Hunt, hey, uh, Tanner Pizza, Bolt the Pockin, Ashley B., Mark D., Robert M., Norman B., and Money with Wings. Those are a few of the people who have signed up recently on Patreon. I have some breaking news today, so I have to play the breaking news music, because that's completely necessary. A lot of people have been posting this on the Facebook group and emailing it to me and stuff. I think it was posted on the Reddit. AT&T and Comcast and a bunch of other carriers, they're all partnering up to stop caller ID spoofing forever. I guess all the robocall hell that's been happening over the past year has finally gotten the phone companies to fix caller ID, which has been broken for about 20 years now. I can't believe it's been almost that long now that people have been able to spoof their caller ID, rendering caller ID completely useless just a few years after it started becoming a mainstream thing. And apparently it's going to start being implemented this year. T-Mobile's been using it already. Sprint says they're going to start using it in the second half of 2019. And a bunch of other companies say they're going to start using this in 2019. I might not be able to spoof calls anymore pretty soon. That's going to be weird. It's worth it, though, for me to stop getting robocalls all the time. I'm pretty excited about this. I want to see where this goes. And I'll still be able to make phone calls that are spoofed, but it's going to show on their caller IDs, I guess that I might be a fake call, kind of like when Gmail says, be careful, this email is coming from a place that might not be real. So that's pretty cool. I will put a link to that in the show notes. Really, I bet it doesn't even happen. Like, why would they do it now if they didn't do it 10 years ago? This is good news for prank calls, though, because people aren't going to be as afraid to pick up their phones. They're going to be more trusting of their caller IDs if this happens. And I won't have to call 20 people to get one good call. That'll be nice. And I'll just get a bunch of legitimate phone numbers in multiple states. But what I think is going to be really funny is if they do implement all of this stuff and then maybe a year later the robocallers figure out how to break it again and it just stays broken for another 20 years again, that's going to be great. I can't wait for that to happen. Let's see, what else? Uh, last night I was on Dwight's show. He does a show every single Saturday night on Prank Call Nation at Mixler.com slash Prank Call Nation. We had a lot of fun with this one lady. She was renting out her apartment, and she said the craziest shit ever to us. And I'm really disappointed that that show is not up on Dwight's feed yet. Let me check one more time, just to be sure. Nope, two weeks since Dwight has updated his feed, because last week we were at the PLA meetup. I really wish I could play some of that for you guys, but I guess we'll just have to wait until next week, when it'll probably be available. It was good stuff, though. This lady was pretty much like Michelle 2.0. You remember Michelle, right, from Twitter, from the early Snowplow Show days? We were theorizing that maybe that was Michelle's mom. Be sure to listen to Dwight's show, though, from March 23rd, 2019. If you want to hear that, it was lots of fun. He also did kind of a post-PLA meetup news show type thing, if you're interested in that. And speaking of PLA meetups, number one, GAD is already forcing us to start planning a Chicago meetup this coming September, just like we did last year which seemed to really kick off the whole meetup thing. So I guess there's going to be an event page for that soon. Somebody will set that up, I'm sure. And Freak Show from the Freak Show Telephone Company, he's doing his own meetup at some antiques phone show in some small town in Indiana. I think it's called Ermine Blam, Indiana, maybe. I forget the name of the city. It's northern Indiana, probably. I'm trying to look it up right now, but I can't find it. I don't know where he put that. But another meetup in Indiana, I guess. I think that was going to happen within the next couple of months. This is a terrible announcement. I can't tell you where it is or when it is. Why even bother? But hopefully I'll have that in the show notes. And then also, I remember Mr. Taco mentioning that he was hoping to get some PLA people to show up in Houston for something he's doing. Whatever the hell that was. I know there's a few PLA people around Houston. And that's another one that I don't know where to get the information from. And hopefully I will have it in the show notes. I'm so unorganized here. Anyway, let's get started with today's show. Today, I'm going to finish up this cow list that Austin sent to me. I've called up pretty much all the numbers on this list, but some of them haven't picked up yet. So I'm going to call them all one last time, see if I can get any of them to pick up, and then throw away the list forever. So here goes. Let's call up people who own Charolais. Hello. Hello, John. Yeah. Hey there. Uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm a... 
astronaut on the International Space Station up here in space. Uh huh. And uh, we're orbiting the Earth right now. We're right above your house. Um, I needed to let you know we're going to be beaming down electromagnetic waves all over your field. Why? Uh, we're going to be attempting to control your cattle, like control their movements and, you know, where they walk around to and stuff. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. No. You know, no, that's what we're doing. Uh, it's completely safe. It's nothing to worry about. Uh, cattle are able to see electromagnetic fields, and we're just going to use that to encourage them to walk in certain places. Huh. Well, I don't know about that. I don't want you to uh, no, do it on somebody else's farm. Uh, no, no, we've already selected your farm because it's uh, you're just like the perfect, um, you know, a, a angle away from the equator and stuff. Uh, it, w it would just be best if we just use your farm. Uh, it's just for the next two hours. The cattle are going to walk around erratically. Walk around erratically, huh? Well, it's it's nothing harmful. It's they're they're completely safe. They're they're just going to be walking to places that they don't want to walk. Is what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Well, how can I check up on this deal? Uh, you can go out there and watch them. It, it it'll probably be interesting to watch. It's no, I want to talk to somebody at NASA besides the astronaut in space. Uh, you can call up NASA if you want. They're in uh, Houston. And what's a good number for that? Uh, seven one three. Four seven one three. Uh huh. Four two zero. Four two zero. Six nine six nine. But it like I don't know if you're going to reach anyone on a Sunday, and uh, nice. we're, we're going to be starting this in about twenty minutes. But it, it'll be fine. Uh, it'll it'll be fine. We're just going to be walking them around the field, making them walk in different formations and patterns and stuff. It's for science. All right. And how did you get my number? Uh, you know, we're, we're NASA. Okay. Well, I guess I don't have any choice in it if I can't say no, but I'm not liking it one bit. I'd like to know about it plenty in advance. Okay. Well, I mean, you don't have to worry. Like, if you go out onto the field, we can't control you because you can't sense electromagnetic fields. It's well, just... Why are, why are we doing that with cows, I wonder? Uh, who knows? I, I, I'm, I just do what I'm told. I'm just an employee, basically. Okay. But, that's, uh, 402 6969. Yep, that's, that's NASA in Houston. Okay. Over there. Alright. I'll be watching. Alright, yeah, just, just don't bother him, though. Like, don't go near him. Alright, well, I'm setting hay up to beat him now, so. I can't promise you that. <laughs> okay, because they could run right into you. Like, you know, they, they, we, we can't really see you from up here in space. Well, We're what just, about my fences if they run through them? Oh, uh, no, it's cool. Like, they wouldn't be able to. They're not They're not bulldozers. Well, a cow runs through a fence, so I'm, I'm doing it in a hurry. But no, I, I got somebody else calling me. Should be fine. Should be fine. All right. All right. Bye. Have a nice day. Yep, bye now. What? What? Did he say not now like a smartass? I think that's what he said. It is weird that I can convince people that this is real, but when I do the helicopter thing and I tell them I'm going to lift up the cattle with our new harness, fly them around the field for a little bit, they don't believe that at all. They think that's a completely unbelievable thing, but, you know, an astronaut calling them, controlling their cattle with magnets, yeah, yeah. Of course that's real. And that guy's gonna try and call NASA tomorrow, or today, maybe. Probably whoever called him just now, he is telling that person about astronauts in space controlling his cows. They're gonna, they're gonna think he's completely nuts. They're gonna start to worry about poor John. By the way, I don't know if cows can see electromagnetic fields or not. Like, I have no idea. I know birds can. They say some animals can. I know they just did a study recently that um, they, they say humans. Hello? Oh, hello, uh, Rick? What's that? Is, it, is this Rick? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Is Rick Brown? Uh, no, he's, he doesn't work here anymore. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We had his name on this on this thing here. Um, I, th This is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm an astronaut. I'm calling from the International Space Station. Uh, -huh. uh, do you work at the farm on Street? Yep. Okay. 
All right, well, uh, maybe I can just let you know. We're going to be, we're orbiting the Earth right now in the International Space Station, and we're right above your field right now. Uh-huh. And we're going to be beaming down, uh, like, electromagnetic waves all over the field, like concentrated okay. waves in, in certain parts of the field. Uh-huh. Um, just, just so you know, that's happening, okay? Okay. Um, we're going to be controlling the movement of your cattle with them. Uh-huh. So the, the cattle are going to move around, like, in, in very unusual, unnatural ways, you're going to notice, for the next couple of hours. Then after uh -huh. that, after that, it'll be over. Okay. Um, you don't have a problem with that, I guess? No. Is there anyone there that would have a problem with this? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Are you sure? Like, is there anyone else I should yep. talk to? I don't want anyone to be upset if the cattle start, you know, like, just uh, acting really strangely and you guys don't like it. Because once we start, yeah, no. we, can't, we can't stop. Yep. Everything's fine then? Yep. Okay, great. Yep. I'll mark you down as uh, yes for controlling your cattle with ele electromagnetic waves from space. Okay. Have a nice day. Yep. yep. Bye. Bye. Well, whatever. That guy's just a farmhand or something. He doesn't give a shit. I gotta talk to at least one more. Hello? Hello, Kevin? Yes. Hey there. Uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm a uh, astronaut. I'm up here on the International Space Station in space right now. Seems odd. Yeah, well, no, there's eight of us up here. Uh, we're orbiting the Earth right now. We're right above your field, though. Yeah. And uh, I needed to let you know we're doing an experiment. Uh, it's going to be all across your uh, entire field. We're going to be beaming down electromagnetic waves. Not a normal Sunday afternoon phone call. Yeah, I know. I know it's a little odd. We we just they're they're making us uh, just try these uh, experiments out. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not a big deal, but we're going to be using these electromagnetic waves to control your cattle's movements. Uh-huh. And they're, you're just going to notice them moving around on the field erratically, like how they normally wouldn't move. So they go left to right versus right to left? Well, we're going to be marching them in formations and stuff and patterns. Like a V or a single wing? or You don't need to make a joke of like this. This is for science. It's for the government. It's uh, it, it's just going to last like maybe two hours and then it'll be over, okay? So what else do you need, that, Steve? That's it. I love the Mac. The background music really makes the whole thing for effect is really good. Yeah, I don't hear any music. I don't know what you're hearing. No, you your music. Your instruments. Uh, there's no instruments. What are you talking about? There's just normal space station sounds. Sounds like you're on drugs. I wish I was. Hey, can you tell those cows in the background to shut the fuck up? <laughs> sure. All right, thank you very much. Have a nice day, Kevin. All right, finally, a guy that's not buying it. I love how we could hear his cows in the background. They were probably mooing in displeasure of being controlled by magnets. Hello? Hello, Kirk? Yes. Hey, Kirk. Uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up here in space. Yes, ma'am, sir. And um, uh, we're just having a small problem here. Um, y you have, like, barbed wire fence, right? Yes. D down there where your cattle are? Yes. Yeah, your cattle keep rubbing up against the fence. And, you know, when it's uh, wet out, it, it kind of... It, it screws with the communications lines that we have running through your fence, and it, it knocks out all of the communications between Houston and the International Space Station. Can you keep your cows away from the fence? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to bother. You're the, what? You're, in space, you're up in the space station, and you want me to keep my cows away from a fence because it messes up your communication. Yeah, it knocks out communications between the space station and Houston, and that could cause... Are you, uh, are you crazy? No, no, I'm not crazy. I'm an astronaut, sir. It's just, you know, our communications lines 
run through your barbed wire fence. We we just it, it's like they it, it's usually just when it's raining is when it's an issue. Kirk, hello. Yeah, I hear you. What, I'm just uh, amazed at what you're asking. Okay, yeah, you just, can't. This can't. This can't be a. Oh, shit. It's just bullshit, sounds like. Hey, t- tell your wife to shut up, okay? Because we're talking. Tell my wife Tell my wife to shut up? Yes, please. It's hard to hear you because she just won't stop talking. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. Yeah, if you could just keep the cows away from the fence, that would be great because it's uh, really causing problems up here and in Houston. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. Why do you say I'm crazy? It's because you don't understand science? You know, the longer I stay on here, the more you can scam me. Is that true? No, this isn't a scam. I'm calling from the International Space Station. I'm orbiting the Earth right now. And your last name's Templeton? Uh, Pendleton. Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm an astronaut. Tuck Pendleton. Yeah. This is a really simple request. I mean, it's not much to ask, really. Just keep your cows away from the fence. Does he know what your name is? Because they keep knocking out the communications. Do you know where I live? Uh, Tell me where I live. Tell me where I live. You don't know where you live? What, what, what's wrong with you if you don't you even know where you live? You tell me where, I, where my cows are. Uh, no, you tell me where your cows are. No, you I, tell me. I don't have to tell you shit. You, you just need to, to to keep your cows away from the damn fence, okay? That that's all we ask. You're, co- you're costing the government billions of dollars by letting them rub up against the fence like that. You're the one. If you're up there in space station, you're the one that's costing the government billions of dollars. Yeah, but it's for the greater good. You know, we're doing experiments and stuff up here. What is your purpose here in this telephone call? Uh, to ask you to keep your cows away from the fence. They're knocking out our phone lines. Hey, I don't even have a cow. The cattle, whatever. I don't know what they're called. I don't know what you farmers call them. Your charolais or whatever they are. Same thing to us. I don't get my milk from cows anyway. I buy mine from the store like a normal person. So, yeah, just keep those things, whatever they're called, away from the fence. You got a mean <laughs> chance in the world. Tell her to shut up. You hear him. Should tell her to shut up. We'll do it. Put, put this thing on speaker, will you? What, you don't know how? I, I don't... Why, why are you just... Why, why are you not even talking to me? Just just go out there and take care of your damn cattle, whatever they're called. Bulls, RLAs. What's your calling for? Keep talking, sir. No. I won't. I feel like if I keep talking, then you're going to be able to scam me out of more money. And I don't want that. <laughs> I didn't call you, Yahoo. <laughs> I ain't no Yahoo, motherfucker. Just delete that, or end that call. Yeah, delete that call. Like it never happened. Anyway, Kirk, I, I have to go. I have more phone calls to make. More scams. <laughs> No, they're not scams. How is this a scam? Tell me how this would be a scam. I'm an astronaut. I'm just call him with a simple request, and and you guys won't even won't even help out. Won't even help your your country. <laughs> yeah, good answer. All right, bye. Hang up. Hang what up. The, huh? What? Hang up the phone. Well, you're the one that called. You hang up. No, you hang up. I won't hang up shit. (laughs) 
I command you, in the name of the government, in the name of the United States of America, I command you to hang up the phone. <laughs> hang it up. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> They'll make us beam microwaves down at your, your house when we pass overhead. <laughs> You just need to be talking with a foreign language. What? What does that mean? <laughs> okay, what, whatever scammers, I'm hanging up. Bye. There, I hung up. Kirk and his wife, they are not true Americans. I think I've had enough of being on the International Space Station, so I'm going to turn off my musical instruments. Go back to the normal voice thing. And finish up this cow list, or this cattle list, bull list, charolais list, whatever the fuck they're called. Apparently that guy didn't have cows. Hello. Hello, Alan? Yes. Hey there, uh, it's Roy, I'm your neighbor. Okay. And I was flying a, a couple of my drones around your field, like flying them all at the cattle and over the cattle and just doing circles mm -hmm. around the cattle and stuff. And uh, I lost, I lost uh, communication with it. Have you found that by chance? You know, uh, in all honesty, I own about seven thousand acres in about three counties. So yeah. I don't know where you're talking about. Oh darn it! Um, where where are you where are you at? Uh, well, I'm I'm in uh, down Quarry Lane. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I was just oh, I, okay. I was just uh, I was flying drones. I was trying to scare your cattle. Why would you do that? Well, because it's funny. You know, I was just chase, chase, chasing them around and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we just lost lost uh, the connection with it, and I haven't been able to reestablish the connection. It's just kind of gone. I hope they didn't step on it. So you're... you're over my kind of scare them and run them around. <laughs> Are you... I mean... Uh, am I what? You really think that's okay? Well, I mean, it was funny at the time, but then I lost... Maybe funny for you. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it's just cattle. It's not like they have feelings. But, uh, you know, that's a $400 drone. I'm just... I was just hoping to get it back. Right. It just got to be a joke. Who is this? Why would I joke about this? I don't know. Why is this my problem? Um, I was just asking if if maybe you found the drone. That's all. No, but if uh, I catch you uh, scaring the cattle again, I'm gonna turn you into the authorities. Oh no, it's not illegal. You can't do that. It's not illegal. They're they're just cattle. It's not like they have rights I, or anything. I got rights, but anyway, what's your name again? Roy, what? Uh, Roy Gerbel. Isabel. Yeah, Roy Isabel. Okay, we'll and, see what kind of rights you have if you're run the cattle around with your drone. So. Okay. Well, you don't have to be a dick about it. I was just trying to get my drone back. You know, those things are expensive. I'm a hobbyist. I'm a drone hobbyist. <laughs> I could care less. Could you? Uh, yeah, really could. So, anyway, I'll call the authorities now and tell them what you're doing, and we'll see no, please, what kind of rights you got. Please don't okay? do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Yep. So... Roy is it, and I got your. Is it how you spell your last name? Oh, Roy? I'm not going to tell you now. Okay. All right. So. Anyway, uh, I can't even believe you're doing that. So anyway. Yeah. Well, you, like you, you would think it's fun too if you were doing it. Hey, you, I got rights. I got rights with my property and my land, and <laughs> I mean, it's just a blowing. This got to be a joke. I'm not hurting them or anything. I'm just flying around them and making them run away. Yeah, okay. So That's all. All right. Well, they'll be in touch with you, Roy, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah I love you. That guy sounds like he just doesn't know how to have fun. You got to try it sometime. Fly around and scare his cattle. It's the best. That's Cody. Hello, Cody? Hey, uh, this is your neighbor. I'm Roy. Okay. Um, I was wondering, um, I, I was flying my drone around on your property, 
you know, around by where your cattle are. And uh, I lost. Where are you at? I'm in. In Missouri? Yeah, yeah, in Missouri. Oh, what? Well, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was, I was just, I was flying my drone at your cattle and like, you know, making them run away and scaring them and stuff. And I lost contact with the drone. Have you found that by chance? If I did, I would have destroyed it. Why would you destroy it? That's my property. Yeah, if you're scaring my cows, I would probably do that. So. Well, you wouldn't have known, but no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, have you found that by chance? Because you can't no. just you can't just tear up my stuff. That's kind of a dick move. No, no, I haven't seen it. Okay, um, if you find that, could you give me a call back, please? You betcha. And and don't destroy it. You know, I'll I'll you, you can't just tear up my things. Don't don't be an asshole. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye. There's another guy that's not a fan of drone hobbyists. Oh, well, this is awesome. Hey, Austin, this is Roy. I'm your neighbor. Oh, hi, Roy. Hey. Uh, I was just wondering if you might have found my drone. I was flying a drone in your field by where the cattle are. Um, I have not seen a drone. Uh, you're going to have to help me out. Where, uh, whereabouts were you flying it? Uh, just kind of over by the hill. Uh, I was I was flying it at the cattle, like chasing them and stuff, making them run, and I just lost contact at some point, and I haven't been able to find it. <laughs> you weren't flying a drone at my cows. Why do you say that? <laughs> That'd be a really stupid thing to do. Why? Like no, it was just I was just having fun, you know. I was just playing around with him, just chasing him around and buzzing circles around him and stuff, and it was freaking him out. Yeah, is this like a prank call? No. Why? Why would this be a prank call? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> because that would be just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What? I'm I'm a drone hobbyist. I have like five different drones. Well, I guess then you won't miss the one that you're missing. Well, no, this is my favorite one. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, if I find it, you probably won't get it back. Why? <laughs> because I'm not going to give you a drone back to fly at my cows. Well, I won't do it again, but you can't just keep my stuff like that. And you can't just fly a drone at my cows, so I guess we'd be what? even. Wouldn't we? Well, no, I wasn't hurting them. I was just, I was just flying at them and scaring them. Okay. Thanks for the call. All right. You're welcome. Yep. So hang up. Hello? Hello. Is Lindell there? Yes. Just a minute. Okay. Lindell? No, it's Lindell. Call phone. I don't know. I don't know. I do not know, Nundle. You always got to want to know that. Hello? Hello, Lind Lindell? Yes. Hey, uh, this is Roy. I'm your neighbor. Yeah. Hey, um, I was uh, flying my drone around on your property, and I lost communication with it. Have you found a drone by chance? No, sure haven't. Okay. I haven't been out over the field, though. Oh, all right, where, yeah. Where do you live at? Uh, I'm way up the road on, on State Route. Oh, Okay. But uh, yeah, I was just—it was like right where all your cattle were hanging out. I was flying my drone. Mm -hmm. I was flying my drone at your cattle, like diving at them and chasing them around and stuff. Oh, You're making them run away. Yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's what I was doing. I, I just—but uh, then I lost contact with the drone. I was flying it from my house. You know, I have cameras on it. Mm-hmm. But you haven't—you haven't found it. No, sure I haven't. Ah. You could. Uh, you can come and look if you want. Okay, yeah, I might do that. I might send another drone over and, like, use that drone to look around for my crashed drone. Or was it up along Dunsey Road? Yeah, yeah, that's I, that's right around where it was. Uh-huh. But, you know, the... Up top the hill up there, probably. Yeah, my other drone, it's it's not, uh, it's not, it, it doesn't go as fast, so it's not as good for chasing your cattle around the field. Uh, we don't like that chasing them cattle anyway, you know. 
Yeah, well, no, it's just, it's just for fun. It's just in good fun. Well, uh, okay. But uh, the cows don't think it's fun, probably. <laughs> yeah, but they don't have feelings. They're just cows. Yeah, they got feelings, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. They're just, they're, they're basically just uh, meat-producing machines, milk-producing machines. That's all. No feelings. Well, they're my cows, and I'll decide on that. Okay, well, no. Uh, but if you want to come and look for it, you sure can. Okay, you know, I'm, but I'm, I appreciate it if you would do that no more, though. Okay, well, no, I, I just, I, I just, I don't hurt them or anything. I just chase them with the drones. I just make them run. Yeah, I don't want you to do that. I'm just, I'm you just, understand? I'm helping them get exercise. Do you understand me? I do not want you to do it. But uh, there, it's, it helps them. It helps them get exercise. I tell it, you, I do not want you to do it. Now, if you want to come and look for that, you can. Okay, I will. Then that's it. But if, if I send my drone over to look for it and I see. Ca- cattle i'm I'm probably going to chase them well you can just come and walk and look oh no I'm just, i want to send the drone i don't like to leave the house i'm really fat well uh i'll just go look myself and and you give me a phone number and i'll call you back oh it's on your caller id just look on your caller id i do not have that uh, i'll send What's my your number i'll send my drone over with my phone number attached to it i'll, I'll uh, hover it at your front door in about 10 minutes What's wrong giving me the phone number? Uh, all right, fine. It's 420-6969. 69 what? 6969. Six, nine. Okay. Now, what's your last name? Uh, Gerbel. How do you spell that? G-E-R-B-I-L. Okay, I'll go see if I can find it. Okay, all right. And uh, if you see my drone over there chasing the cattle, though, just stay away from it, though, okay? Like, because I'm probably going to fly my other one over there tonight. Well, you better not. Well, no, I'm just... All I can tell you. I'm just having fun. I'm just... I'm giving the cows... I don't care. It ain't fun to my cattle, and I do not want you to do it. Do you understand? But they need the exercise. It helps them. Do you understand? I do not want you to do it. They're my cows, and I'll I'll do what I want with my cows. But you what, know. Are you just against fun? I mean, I'm just having fun. No, I'm not against fun, none whatsoever. But you're not going to have fun with my cows. But it's not hurting anything. It's it's helping them. It's it's giving them exercise. It's keep I it. tell you, I do not want you to do it. Now you can argue all you want to, but I do not want that drone on my place. Let's keep chasing it. my cows. It, Okay, but it's you just, understand. Yeah, I understand. It's just that it's keeping them okay, active. Okay, then that's what them, I want you to do. It's keeping them now, active. Goodbye, and I'm gonna go look for it, and I'll I'll call you. Because, like, if I go out, you know. if I go up the road to the neighbor's house and chase their cows, then I have I have less fuel to do it, so I don't can't do it as long. <clears throat> well, I doubt if anybody wants you to chase their cows. Old, pro- probably they do. Like, really, you guys should be paying me for this because I'm keeping them active. You know, I'm giving them exercise. They do not, they get all the exercise they need. They just won't do no as good if you do that. But they don't usually run around. Like, like usually they're just that's, standing there, like, getting fat. That's, well, that's what I want them to do, and I do not want you to do it. Do you understand me? You don't want them to be leaner cows, like, you know, more fit? I do not want you to chase my cows. Now, can you understand that? No, I understand. I just don't... I don't okay, then, get, that's what I want you to do. They're my cows, and I... I can tell you not to do it if I want to. Well, yeah. And I appreciate it if you will not do it. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll stop doing it, I guess. Okay. I, mean, unless they I know get, you will. You better. Unless they get in my way when I'm, I'm doing my search and my rescue for my drone, my missing drone. I'll go look for it. Okay, all right. But if you don't find it, okay. I'll... Uh, you, might see my okay. drone, you might see my drone out there looking, too. If, well. if, if, if I see you out there, I'll say hello through the intercom. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, All right. Ha- have a nice day. So Lindell, he must like fat and lazy cows, I guess. Doesn't want his cattle getting any exercise. So uh, I think I want to try at least one more helicopter call. Because I didn't really get any good responses the other day when I was doing that. Trying to lift their cows up into the air. But just one last shot at the whole helicopter thing. Cattle harness. Gotta work, right? Hello. Hello, Karen? Yes. Hey, uh, this is Roy. I'm a helicopter pilot. We're flying our helicopter right above your field right now. Uh Uh-huh. 
and I'm calling to let you know we're going to be testing out one of our harnesses. Um, we're going to be picking up one of your cattle. Just raising picking them up. Picking up one of our cattle? Yeah, just raising them up into the air and he's just flying them a, a little ways and then lowered them back down. Uh, we just didn't want you to be concerned if you saw us doing that. And, and why are you doing this? Uh, just to test out our new harness. We've got a new harness here on the helicopter. And, well, let me get my husband before... I, I assume these are... I don't know. These are what? I don't I, I didn't want you to bother the cows that were pregnant that are getting ready to calf. Oh, well, we'll be sure not to bother a pregnant one. This is somebody with a helicopter that wants to practice picking up a cow. Picking up a yeah. With a harness. Here, you... Yes. Listen to him. Okay. Hello? Yeah, this I don't is Tom. I don't, need to talk. I don't hear him. I don't either. Tom, talk to him so they can hear you. He's got to have the phone. I know, he's got the phone. Oh, it's not working. I don't hear him. You don't hear him? No. No, I think someone tri tripped over the phone wire and pulled it out of the wall, maybe. No, it's a... Okay, you should hear him now. Hello? Uh, right now. Hello, Tom? Yeah, I'm here. Hey there, uh, I'm just, I'm a helicopter pilot. We're getting ready to pick up one of your cows with our new harness. I see. Yeah, we're, 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 at? we're just, we're, we're out in the field. Uh, we're just over there by where the cattle are. We're way up in the air. You probably can't see us, but yeah, we're just going to pick up one of the cows and pull them way up into the air and then lower them back down and he'll be, he'll be fine. All right. So, yeah, what we're, kind of cows you got? What? What color is the cows? I don't know, like they're dark color from up here. Oh, that's all our color. What? Or, uh, white. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean, dark white. Like, it's like a dingy white, right? Yeah, it's going be a little... Yep. It'd be white. It's yep, we're just going to pick up one of them and, and just kind of do some circles with him. And then we'll lower him back down really carefully. And yeah, you're up... You're up as far? What? You're up to the farm, are you? Yeah, yeah, we're right above the field right now, right above the cattle. We're way up, okay. we're way up high so we don't scare them. All right. But yeah, we're just going to pick, right. pick up one of your cattle and fly them around for a bit. Okay. Is that okay? I guess. We'll be, sure you're one way or another. We'll be really careful. All right. Would it be okay if we, like, flew them over to where your house is and just put them, like, basically in the front lawn? <laughs> Just for fun. Just to see if we can do it. Oh, I guess. There's no power lines, right? No. Okay. What, what, if, what, okay. If, what if we lower them onto the roof? Uh, that probably would look pretty good. Just for a second. Just cause, so I can take a selfie picture of me I lowering know. a cattle onto the roof. Okay. All right. But, th but then we'll put them back in the field. All right. That'd be fine. So we're going to put it on your roof. All right. Well, and that's our son's roof. It's, it's, it's are you at the... What? We live in town. Our, our son lives at the farm, and we live in town. Oh, okay. You might want to call your son and just let him know I'm going to be flying his cattle around on the field with our helicopter. Okay. I'll call him and tell him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just one of them, and, and we won't pick a pregnant one. We'll pick a we'll pick a nice, yes. nice healthy male one. Okay. <laughs> put, it on the, put it on the roof or on the car or something. Sound good? Hello. Hello. Hey, you're still there. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're we're uh, we're hooking up the cattle right now and pulling them up into the air. All right. Oh, See you. oh, geez, these things are heavier than we thought. It's pulling us down. Yeah, it's that's okay. It's pulling the helicopter down. It's. Oh. It's, these, these things are heavy. Oh, my gosh. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're fine. Everything's fine. That's good. Okay. <laughs> All right, bye. Hang up. Man, if only I had some crashing sound effects or something. Be like, crap, my helicopter just crashed into seven of your cattle. Took them all out. Cows on fire everywhere. 
and I'm happy enough with that one. I'm done with the helicopter thing. I did so many of those helicopter calls the other day, and just nobody cares. They, they either think it's a joke or they're fine with it, which is kind of how that guy reacted. But whatever. I just have a few numbers left here. Let's see if any of them pick up. Hello? Hello, Debbie? Yes? Hey, uh, this is Roy. I'm your neighbor. Okay. I, I live up the road on Highway... On Highway... Okay. Yep. Hey, um, I was in your field uh, last night, and I was tipping one of your cows over while it was sleeping, and I stepped in cow poop. And? And it, it's like all over your field. Like, you guys don't even pick it up. Nope, we don't. Why don't you? No need to. Why? It's gross. I pick up after my pets. Go for it. Go for what? You're welcome to come pick up all the cow poop you'd like. No, I don't want to. I'm just saying it's kind of a, a, a dick move because I, I was walking through your field and I stepped right in it like two different times. Okay. And? Well, can you apologize? No. Why? You shouldn't have been in my field. Well, we had to get in the field to tip the cow. <laughs> you shouldn't have been doing that either. Why not? It doesn't hurt him. So your joke is now not no longer funny, and I'm going to hang up. Thank you. Was it funny before? Before. Which part wasn't funny? Was it the cow tipping part? Because I said that at the very beginning. Hello. Hello, Derry? Yes. Hey there. Uh, this is Roy. I'm your neighbor. I live up the road on Old Highway. Okay. And I was wondering if uh, maybe you might have found my uh, jacket. Uh, I left it out in your field by where the cattle are. Um, no, I haven't been out. We've been down here sandbagging on the on the on the levees. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I was just wondering. I was out there uh, about two nights ago. We were, me and my friend were tipping your cows, and I set my jacket. Oh, really? on, yeah, I set my jacket on the ground, and I forgot it. You were tipping our cows. You were tipping them over while they were sleeping. Really? Yeah. Um, where was this at? Um, I I don't know where it was. It's just you know it's like close to the road. Roy, where do you live? Uh, I'm just I'm way down the road. I'm on old highway. But so I guess uh, we we might come back uh, tomorrow and try and look for it. I'll tell you what. You leave my fucking cows alone and stay the hell off my property, all right? Well, no, I got to get my jacket. Yeah, whatever. But I, w hey, don't, what, what the hell? It's a, it's a time-honored tradition, cow tipping. It's what all the kids do. All right, so that was actually the very last person on the list. Uh, there's a third page, but it's the Junior Charolais Breeders Association, and it's like a bunch of kids' names. And I probably shouldn't be calling a bunch of kids that are raising cows. So I guess I'm done with this list. Thanks, Austin, for this paper list that you sent me in the U.S. mail. I'm going to rip it up. I'm ripping it up. I'm ripping this list up and throwing it in the trash can. That's what I think of your list. Hey, Brad. Yay. Hey. Mr. Taco. Oh, hey, Mr. I just Taco. I to say hello. All I right. miss you. Okay. Uh, but also what I wanted to say was... The thing I like uh, the best about your show is when you call people and they, they know you're they're on to you, and so you admit all the the other calls that you you've talked about. Like you'll you'll call someone and they'll be like, oh you know, I called this other place and told them this and that, and I just think that's the most hilarious part of the show. Especially when they laugh anyway, about it. Anyway, I love you, man. And aww. You get me through hard times, buddy. Thanks, Mr. Anyway, Taco. Anyway, talk to you later. Mr. Taco, signing out. Nope. Away! Nope, nope, nope. Not even you. Nobody can do it. It's over. Let's leave that in 2015. Hey, Brad. Calling on in from Tempe, Arizona. Hey. I just wanted to let you know, um, well, I wanted to let everyone know that if you just take a beat from FL Studio and, like, play a PLA prank over it, that's not... That's not a song. I don't think that's a song. Uh, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just two Person. pieces of media you put that. together. I know I'm one to say, because literally, like, the last time I made a song was 2016, I think. And it was it was just me 
it was like a joke, but I don't think, I think he played it once, like at, around 2016. Um, but yeah, 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 I am, but I think that's enough of the like to stand on when I say that, uh, these songs that are just like beats over, um, but you know, your voice is talking to people are pretty, I mean, they're, I mean, whatever. It's, I mean, I guess it's, songs. it's something. I I was just thinking about that. Cactus, cactus. You get to rehear the best parts of a prank, don't you? I assume that was the best parts. I don't know. Brad! Brad! Pick up! It, it's a voicemail. Hey, listen, I, I want some random guy at Google Home. You should call him back and tell him to shut the fuck up. My name's Cletus, by the way. Have a good day. Okay, Cletus. He said he's on some random guy's Google Home, but the number comes in as unknown. Brad! So. What's up? Hey, you brought back the old voicemail message. Yeah. That was pretty retro. I was going to re-record a new one where I don't mention to push one to skip the message since that doesn't work anymore. But then I noticed those old voicemail things are still in there. So I just did that instead because I'm lazy. Anyways, not really a request, just more something that uh, maybe you might want to pick up. I was listening to shows about a year ago. And uh, what you were doing is you were telling people that you were opening their cars because you left your ferret or different animals in their car. And um, there was this one guy who was the best part of the show because he kept trying to bring up Jumanji every time he got mad. And like I think it was the third or fourth time he brought it up. He's like, I don't give a fuck about Jumanji. What the hell were you doing in my car? And uh, that was like the best part ever. And um, if you wanted to just bring up Jumanji when they get upset again, I think it'd be the funniest thing ever. At least to me. I don't know. Everybody else might make it stuff, but I think it's funny. Uh, That's it. Big voice. Oh, wait. I'll try to remember that. It's a great idea. I just always forget to do it, to bring up the Jumanji movie. And I kind of feel like the new Jumanji movie kind of spoiled that joke a little bit because before they would know I'm talking about the 1990s Jumanji, but now they're going to just figure I'm talking about the new movie. Stupid remake ruined my joke. Hey, Roy. It's T Falcon here. Hey, T Falcon. I'm just listening to uh, the Snowplow Show episode 539. Bad pet owner. Okay. And I'm less than 10 minutes in. You already have two stores. Um, oh, crap. Just trying to enjoy the show and, and, let's, uh, and do homework. But you uh, pronounced somebody's name wrong. Oh, great. Um, you said Johan. <laughs> and it's, it's pronounced Johan. You don't know how it was spelled. It was spelled weird. If it's a German name, the, the a J makes a yes sound. So yeah, Johan. Okay. Whatever. Not Johan. Okay. But Johan. Got it, Brad? Thank you. I hope so. And the only reason why, why I know this is because my favorite fictional character's name is Johan. So. Nerd. Anyway, I just wanted to correct you since I know you love being corrected. Yep. Bye, Brad! It's the best. Thanks. Hey, Brad. It's Dot Not Brad again. Hey, Not Not Brad. Anyway, I had an idea for a prank call show, which uh, I'm going to leave here just because uh, I love the idea of doing it. <laughs> But anyway, uh, you should call up any place. It, it don't matter, like Burger King, gas stations, come and goes, <laughs> etc. Tell them that you want to speak to someone through a customer survey. Oh, this is Once great. they pick up the phone. I love this idea. Tell them that the phone they picked it's up going really well. is germified, that they're going to die from whatever known illness that you have in mind. Yeah. Cancer or anything. Make them panic. Uh, but have fun with it. Bye, Brad. Get them to call the police. Try to put the button. Be Try great. Pressing a button right now, bud. All right, bye. Hey, Brad. Hey. Uh, I called you a while back. I just want to know uh, for the less, uh, the less smart than you are, Brad. Uh, yeah, the less smart. How you do get the, how you can get, make lists for you and send them in. For phone numbers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can ya? You should just ask in a normal voice. But yeah, just go to snowplowshow.com. There's a link on the top of the page to submit prank requests and stuff. I forget what it's called. Probably prank requests or request a prank or something like that. Snowplowshow.com. That's where you ask for numbers to be called or lists or whatever you want to do. So there you go, mystery solved. That's how you submit pranks, is you go to the website, Durr. Hey, Brad, it's Crimson. Uh, so, calling the phone losers army. Are you ready? We need to subscribe to PewDiePie. Oh, fuck, and fuck this shit. What? Come on. Basically, we need to start taking clips from phone losers episodes, from Sopar Show episodes, that are 15 seconds or less, uh-huh. and you might see us coming, but we need to start 
uploading them to TikTok and making memes out of them. Okay, Brad? Right. Then people will search for the origin of all the clips. What a great I mean, idea. Think about the clip like, smoke a funny cigarette and shove it up your ass. <laughs> Remember that lady? And take that clip and start like acting out the scenes and things. And uh, it, it would be really funny. I, I could do. totally see a lot of the clips taken off. All right. Like Everyone the, do that. Post PLA clips on TikTok. Make viral memes to get my show to be more popular. I'd really appreciate it. Hey, Roy. Hey. It's Nick with Nick Co. Incorporated. Hey, Nick. It's been a while since I've called a couple of years. You yeah. know, board meetings, all that other cool stuff. Yup. But, uh, you know, I was talking to Brad, the producer, the other day. I don't know if you remember him. But it I turns sure out do. you sent him a Christmas card last year. And he fucking opened it yesterday. And by yesterday, I mean March 24th. What a dick. That's kind of a fucked up producer, last side check, and I think you should fucking fire him. That's an asshole move. He doesn't right. appreciate the things you fucking do for him, or the things you send to him. You should fire him right now. Like, stop this voicemail and fire him immediately after you stop this. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, uh, bye, honey baby. It's gonna happen. We're gonna stop playing voicemails right now, because I've got some firing to do. I'm sick of Brad the producer's shit. So thank you, everybody, for listening to today's show. I hope you didn't hate it. Thank you, Plaz and Stan Trucker, Thomas Z, Arbitrary Alex, and Badger Teeth for sponsoring today's episode. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash phone losers or phone losers.com slash cactus or the other one that is in the show notes down there and give just $5 a month to get you an extra show every single week called a hobo sode and fun stuff usually happens in those most of the time i highly recommend them don't forget to check out all of the other great prank call shows that are out there believe it or not this is not the only one i mentioned dwight in the beginning of the show but there's plenty more i've really been enjoying devon lately her and her drunken mess of a show you can find that at mixler.com slash anus tart she's been doing shows with justin lately which doubles the drunkness factor and there's also another prank call show that's the name of it another prank call show that's the show that king richard and olga do and you can find that at another prank call show.com i've been enjoying those a lot lately too of course there's the carlito show at madhouselive.com and lots of other people have prank call shows if you have one you should post it in the comments of wherever you're listening to this at and tell everyone about your show i'm going to end today's show with something a little bit different this is the latest soundscape from Radio Free Camelin, which is made by Randall Thor, a longtime friend of the Snowplow Show and the PLA. He does these soundscapes where he just blends a bunch of music and weird sound effects and television shows and prank call shows and lots of random obscure PLA things into them. And I don't really know how to explain it, so I'm just going to play 10 minutes, maybe 15. Hopefully he doesn't mind of his latest sound collage that he's put together the full thing is an hour long so if you like this you should go to his website or his twitter and listen to the rest of these i think this is show number 80 so there's a bunch of these and they all have pla clips in them i know i played at least one of these before on the show this one apparently came out earlier today so here it is super awesome fun time with rand all thor if you want to deny it that's fine but if you do it another time we're going to give you a ticket I do not want you to chase my cows.